Hello everyone and welcome to week two of introduction to Java programming. So what I did is I posted a lecture out on the uh, blackboard uh, on PowerPoint kind of explaining the things that we're going to learn this week uh, which is basically variables, the different types of variables. We kind of touched bases on a little bit um, in class last week but today we're going to um, I'm going to set up a few different videos to kind of get you started. As you see here on the screen I already have um, this already set up with uh, variables. So I already have everything up and running. So I've already created my new, I came in and created a new project. Um, and then after I created a project, I created a uh, class. So um, as far as a package, you could have the default package. You could always rename that. But in this case, it's just um, a variable static. So as you see here, this is our starting point. This is our main class, and this is our the main part of the class. So think of it as when the program starts up, this is where it's going to start and it's going to say, hey, what do you want me to do now? I'm sitting here, you tell me. So in this, in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to set up, um, uh, a, we're going to set up a class called public static, well, an, yeah, let's call it a method. So we're going to set up a method called uh, public static void, we'll call calculate. In this case, we don't want to pass any parameters. So you just want to make sure that when you do it, you do an open and close parentheses and then you do your open and close um, brackets right here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, examples of different variable types with lower and uppercase. Now, the key thing is when working with uh, variable types, it's case sensitive. So let's, for example, let's say that we wanna set up a string. Okay, and a string is, like we mentioned last week, it's just basically a name. So let's say that we wanted to do string name and then we have to end it. As you notice here, it has a good, little bit of a red line. It says can't be resolved. Because what that means is Java doesn't know what that is. It's like, what is this? Why are you creating this? Only way that would work is, as if you remember in our first week discussion, we talked about DOLs. If we set up our own dynamic library and, and specify a list of our own variable types, well, guess what? Once that's declared and then we have an import piece up here, say we had it called import something up here okay what would happen is even though that's nothing it would pick up the string because it would notice that um, the library and say oh okay i know what that is but in this case we're using uh, java sling so what we want to do is we want to use uppercase string so as you see here we have string name another thing is if you click on the yellow part of it it says the value of the local variable is not used so it notices that we um, declared it but it doesn't know that we actually have used it so in this case, we could do a couple different things. We could do name equals um, no walker. Excuse me, and we do that. Now that works that way. The value of local, is, local variable is not used, but it is used because you see here, name equals no walker. That's one way of doing it. Another way is we could just say, eh, we don't want that. We could do equals no walker. As you see here, now we declared our string and we call it no walker. Now, you notice here, that end part right there, you notice it's unresolved. When working with Java, C Sharp, and some other programs, you have to use a semicolon or uh, the program will not work. So in this case, it works fine. So let's say that we wanted to print that. So we, we did this in class, and right now we're not getting into the swing aspect of it. We're just kind of getting into just the fill of how the right stuff, and that's why it's nice to use the console to do some testing here. So in this case, we're going to type in system dot out dot print. Oops, come on, pick me up. And we're going to going to put the variable there. So the variable is name in this example. So what we're doing here, we're saying string name equals nil walker. We want to print it to the screen, um, and we want to use that variable name. Has anyone seen what we did wrong here yet? I ran it, but it didn't work. Ah, oh, that's what we forgot to do. We forgot forgot to declare the method. So the method is calling calculate in this sense. So we want to choose calculate as our method. This is our um, method that gets called to do something. So in this example here, it calls this method. And once it calls the method, it says, what do you want me to do? So we could do so many different things with that. So let's hit run. Guess what? It says no walker right here. 
We could even say, hello, Neil Walker. See? All right. So let's add some other stuff to this. Let's make this a little bit more information. So other things that we want to talk about is we want to talk about other. There's so many different variables. So we've learned that integers basically within our lecture this week. We learned about whole numbers. It's not decimal, decimal numbers. So we've learned that integers are whole numbers. So let's say that we wanted to declare an integer. Can we do int um, my number equals 2.2? Now, see, if you click on this right here, it's a mismatch. It says you need to convert it to a double, to an int. So we, it knows that, hey, this is not right. But if we did 23, works fine. So if we did 18, which is Neil Walker's number, is 18. Now what we could do is we could do something like this. We could just come down here and say system.print line and we could say my number. Pretty simple. So if we run this, it displays hello Neil Walker and the number that he is. Now we could get really creative with this. We could say, all right, we want to set up a new string. We want to call it, this would be like consolidating information. So let's say that we wanted to discuss um, how to add um, the different strings. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video. But right now, let's say that hypothetically, we wanted to add no walker. Uh, let's see here. We go up here and say string uh, message equals name plus my number. Now you'll notice something when we do this. Oops, can't get that. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to comment this out because we want this to display. When you comment it out, we could do so. Now we're just going to display that. Oops. What am I doing? All right, so we're just going to display that message. You're going to see something interesting here. When we run this, it says "Hello, the Walker," but it has 18. What we want to do is we want to put a space in between that. Now let's run it. We got hello no walker 18. But that's still not what we want. Hello no walker. Um, my number, jersey number is. And now if we run it, hello no walker, jersey number is 18. So right there is an um, example of some of the other variable types. Now let's say that we wanted to use a double. We wanted to say uh, average equals, well, let's say double, um, so, let's say uh, money equals, so we want to say double money equals $3.94. Same thing here. We want to display that value, call it money. We then execute it, and it displays 3.94 down here. So this is just a kind of example of some of the things that you could do. This is pra good practice. Uh, you could do a float. We talked about float. Um, it could be used as a double as well. We'll call it money two equals 3.8899. Oh, oops. So in this case, we have to convert it. But what we could do is we could do 33 and it'll work fine because it's acting as an integer. But when you're doing a double, you have to convert it. See, it gives it the 30, it gives it the idea that you're doing $33 and zero cents. Um, another one would be a char, which is very much a string. You could do char um, last name equals uh, uh, Jeffries. Oops. Let's see here, char, why does it like char? So in this case, I'll show this in a, another video. Um, when using certain, such as float and char, you have to convert them to a string. But why use, why use a char if you could just use a string? So just showing you an example. You might use, um, you might use a char or also name as a car is if you're using a, a database variable types. Um, you'll see, in, if you work with databases, You'll see that that's one of the characters. And a character, a char, is basically a defined position. So let's say that, for example, you have um, 
four spots. And that basically spells last, even though that won't work there. So let's comment that out so it doesn't get mixed up. So let's say that we have four spaces and we know that that is going to spell last. If you're using a chart value, you could define the specific um, length of that data structure. So for example, if you declare a four, that means it's going to expect four spaces. If the value is three spaces, that's okay. When you go to run your code, it's going to show that it's four spaces, even though the only three are being utilized. So that's the interesting about that. It's a good data structure type to use if you know that the specific value is never going to change. And then I would go with that. So uh, today that is my session on this. And I'll post this code to the uh, examples folder on our um, Blackboard. All right. See you in the next video. Thanks.